Lifeweaver has gone through many iterations in his short time being in the game, but now that his spot is starting to become solidified in the meta, using my top 500 knowledge, let's learn how you can carry more games on your favorite support. Let's start with the basics of each ability and work up to the advanced ideas and then discuss how he fits into every game, starting with his primary damage fire, Thorn Volley. Bound to right click by default, Lifeweaver shoots 42 shot projectile bursts that deal 12 per hit at a relatively fast speed. Compared to Zenyatta or Baptiste, this isn't a whole lot, so he doesn't pack a whole lot of punch in terms of damage. That being said, there are still a lot of good uses for his damage. For example, if you have nothing to heal, you can weave in damage and your healing blossoms will be reloaded in the meantime after two and a half seconds. This is the way you can really stand out as a life weaver and is something a lot of your opponents aren't going to be doing. On top of this, there is no damage fall off on the projectiles, so it can be a great way for you to break things like shields and turrets to take away utility from the enemy and give your team an easier time winning the fight. The reason it isn't great to go for damage on characters from range is that the spread of each burst grows to a max after 20 shots from a really far distance. So dueling on Lifeweaver isn't always ideal, but it isn't like his damage should be forgotten. There is always an opportunity cost that you have to account for because when you are doing damage, you are not healing, which is an incredible strength to Lifeweaver. So let's talk about the other side of the equation, his healing blossom. Bounce to left click by default, Lifeweaver shoots healing blossoms from his hand that heal a friendly target up to 75 points depending on how long the player charges it up. By just tapping, you will only heal for about 10 HP. By holding for the full one second charge duration, you will heal for 75, but move 25% slower while you hold on to that blossom until you release it. The projectile tracks friendlies from a maximum range of 30 meters, but gets blocked by shields. There are some techniques you can use to avoid this, like looking closer to the ground to avoid the Winston bubble or above the Rhine shield to catapult the heal in the air. But all in all, you won't always be able to dodge shields in the heat of the moment. So make sure to watch the positioning portion of this video to help maximize your uptime. Something you might be wondering though is what is the optimal time to charge your healing? Well, it depends. Mathematically, the highest healing per second for Lifeweaver is charging it to 75. However, how much you are going to charge your healing is going to be dependent on the situation. And situations where you can anticipate a high burst of damage, like against a Cassie or Echo for example, you generally have time to charge the full 75 if you play proactively. If your teammate needs consistent healing, for example, against targets like Zarya, Symmetra, and Soldier, charging to around 45 Five points of healing is optimal. Sometimes, however, things can get very interesting where you might need to take a mix of both styles. For example, if a teammate is fighting against a Genji, you really need to keep them above 50 HP so they cannot get killed by a dash, granting the enemy Genji a dash reset to further decimate your team. This is something that is important to understand against every character, but this is one of the most common ones. Lastly, if your teammate is about to take a duel, you can charge your healing to max and then send it in as they take the 1v1, very similar to a Brig Pack. This will commonly occur for characters like Genji, Tracer, and Echo. Keep this in mind when we discuss them later in the video. If you can master Lifeweaver's healing capabilities, it is amongst the strongest in the game, as you essentially have a clip of 20 Brig Packs that heal instantly when they connect. Keep this in mind, and let's move on to the next ability, the Life Grip. On a 16 second cooldown, Life Grip pulls a teammate to Lifeweaver's position, leaving them immune while in flight to his location, healing them for a total of 50 health as well. It shares the same distance as his primary fire, so it's important to keep yourself close enough to your team to pull them out. The primary use of Life Grip and Life Weaver in general is to let a character on your team go in extremely aggressively, find a pick or force out cooldowns, and get pulled back to safety. For example, you could send in your Reinhardt to pin onto the enemy Baptiste, force out a lamp that is on a 23 second cooldown, pull the Rhine out when he gets low and he needs it, and then take the fight from there, either finishing it really fast or waiting for your grip to come back online again since that ability is only on a 16 second cooldown, a 7 a second difference between the life grip and the lamp. In all honesty, if you aren't using Lifeweaver to enable teammates to play this way, why are you on Lifeweaver? Aside from the core use of the ability, it has some pretty interesting interactions with different characters. First, you can pull characters like Pharah and Reaper while they are using their ultimates to distribute the damage to different locations. This is really fun to do, but it is hardly ever effective because you can't move your crosshair that effectively when you're getting pulled. You can, however, also pull characters like Cassidy or Soldier when they're using their ultimates and even Bob, but these cases are usually better off to use the pedal platform, which we will cover momentarily. Momentarily. Next, pull can be used to take people out of ultimates like Graviton Surge and Gravitic Flux. Being able to pull people out of these ultimates is a big deal, as you can avoid using support ultimates like Transcendence and Beat Drop when only one target is caught. This opens up the door to be aggressive with them instead, giving you more options altogether. Lastly, there are some abilities that will cancel the pull or prevent you from pulling, but going into each and every one of these abilities is going to be extremely boring and just straight up hard to remember, so you're better off practicing and learning the intuition 
information from experience. Just make sure that when you pull a character, you aren't leaving another target more vulnerable. If a Rhine pins your tank and you pull them out of it, but it then leads the Rhine to pin your other support instead of your tank, that made the situation worse. Not to mention, if your position gets blocked off by the environment or maze ice wall, it can leave your teammates stuck with no ways out. So understand that not every pull is a good pull. The grip does not cleanse like many people think it does. So trying to save people from a dynamite or a queen ultimate can be very difficult unless you have very solid positioning. Furthermore, sure, I can pull out my tank that is one from across the map, but if I pull him out into the open, it doesn't matter. He's still just going to get shot and die. If you can learn when it's the right time to pull in order to enable your teammates, you are playing Life Weaver the right way. Let's take a deep breath and talk about an easier ability, the Rejuvenating Dash. This ability is super simple. When you jump, you can jump again to dash forward six meters and heal yourself for 50 HP. You can switch it to an alternate keybind so you don't have to jump before dashing if you would like to have more fluid movement as well. While it is so easy to understand, that makes it really easy to overlook and mess it up. If you anticipate you are going to get targeted by an enemy, you'll want to make sure that you don't waste this ability just to move around so that you have it when you take the damage to keep yourself up for longer. This is the difference between having at least 275 health in a fight and 225 when used effectively. That's more than a Reaper! That being said, it is okay to use the ability to reach around a wall for a teammate with a life grip or to hit some clutch healing in different situations. Just don't overlook it so much to the point where you're using it off cooldown just because it looks cool and feels good when you do it. I used to do it because of this, so just make sure you hold yourself accountable. Okay, that was our break. Now let's get into another very complicated ability, the pedal platform. Lifeweaver can throw out a platform that raises players like an elevator if they step on it for 10 seconds every 12 seconds. If you jump at the end of its summit, you get a little boost of height as well that can help you access some high grounds relatively quickly, even as a character with no vertical mobility. That seems pretty simple, right? Well, this is where things start getting really difficult. The part that makes this ability so powerful is that the cooldown of the ability begins as soon as you throw it out. You can pre-place the platform in places you or a teammate might want to take during the fight to sustain yourself throughout the fight or take an off angle and destroy a team with pure damage alone or a powerful ultimate. From my experience, pre-placing your platforms for yourself is the most common against dive compositions as it is the only way you can live against them. Typically, as a Winston jumps you, you'll want to rotate back to your platform, take it, drop off of it once another person jumps onto you, and then use the one in your inventory to dodge them all again since they won't have their movement abilities anymore. That should give you enough time to get some help from your team and find a kill and then turn the fight. Understand though that just because you are on a platform doesn't mean you are safe. Sometimes it gives an enemy hit scan an angle to take your head off, or let a Ramatra send his melee attacks through it. Sombra could even hack the platform to take you back down, so don't get too comfortable. Against hit scans, it can also be predictable when sitting on a platform. Platform. To counteract this, you can cancel its flight early to force yourself back down by gravity, which will always give hit scans an impossible 50-50 decision instead of the predictable elevator movement. This ability can also be used to counter ultimates too. For example, you can lift the enemy Arisa up when she is in Terra Surge to mitigate all of its damage. You can lift up a teammate that got shattered from a Reinhardt and life grip another. You can even lift teams out of Graviton Surges if you are close enough to the ground and have the space above you for the platform to push you up. Furthermore, if the if the pedal is placed too close to a wall or roof, it won't propel up all the way. Instead, it will get stuck up halfway. This can be used to obstruct lanes for long enough to get yourself a health pack in a duel or maybe make a swift getaway. The opportunities are limitless with this ability, so get practicing and be creative. That is why this character is so fun. Enough talk about Life Weaver's pedal platform though, it's time to talk about the elephant in the room, his ultimate, the Tree of Life. Upon being placed, this ultimate heals for 150 points instantly, pulsating for 75 healing every every 1.75 seconds for a total of eight times throughout its entire uptime for all friendly targets around the healing radius. This means it has a potential to heal 750 points for every single person on the team. On top of this, 50% of all that overhealing is then converted to overhealth for a maximum of 100 overhealth. On top of the healing benefits, the tree can also be used to block off choke points, to block off sight lines, or just isolate targets in general. Just keep in mind that the tree can be broken, although it will take some serious focus 
focus fire considering it has 1,200 health. I typically use the tree to burst heal my tank that should already be playing incredibly aggressively to take advantage of situations and force a team fight where my team wants to take it and the enemy doesn't. Because of the extra healing, the ultimate allows your team to fight in places you otherwise would not be able to, although on some maps you can get arguably more value just from isolating a target from their team. This is usually the case on maps with tight chokes like Lijong, Night Market, and even Garden if you place it right. However, something that is even more important to think about is where the fight is going to take place. Just like Baptiste Window or Kiri Ultimate, the first option the enemy team has is to simply run away and wait for the tree to go away. You want to try to use the tree in situations where the fight has to happen, like an overtime push or on a position that the enemy team has to take or even after they have already invested into the fight and they are at a point of no return. This is a concept that you really only learn through intuition and time, but it's good to just keep in the back of your mind. Some interesting interactions include placing the tree in the middle of Sigma Ultimate to completely negate its effects on your team, but if it looks like the SIG is only going to get one of your teammates in the ultimate, there's no need for you to waste your tree because you just pull your teammate out instead. Obviously, this reaction is dependent on the situation at the end of the day, though. Keep in mind that you shouldn't hold on to tree all day, though. It charges incredibly quickly and can be used to turn a lot of fights because of that. The best life weavers are going to generate tree quickly and carry through with the ultimate, so make sure you are always trying to find ways to build it fast and control the game. This can be done through cycling damage like we were discussing earlier, or dropping the tree once you use it after you've already won the fight, so you can then heal your teammates for that extra ultimate charge. Now that we have finished talking about all of Life Weaver's kit, let's discuss how he fits into the deeper levels of the game through understanding win conditions. A win condition is a way in which a team can win a team fight. Obviously, there are many different possible win conditions for each and every team fight, but there are some that are more effective and efficient than others. That is, there are ways to win a fight by using a minimal amount of ultimates to get the maximum value needed. So let's talk about two compositions where Life Weaver could be played, powerful win conditions within these compositions themselves, and how the win conditions interact with different compositions. The first composition we will discuss is a poke composition that seeks to surround the enemy, including Sigma, Tracer, Sojourn, Baptiste, and Life Weaver. Because this poke composition utilizes Life Weaver, it allows for the Sigma to be extremely aggressive with the angle he is taking to better support the the team and taking down popular brawl compositions that are strong right now. This is their basic win condition, even if it seems a little bit complicated. In the mirror, surrounding the enemy team faster and taking control of different lanes more efficiently is how you are going to take home the win. As Life Weaver, supplying your team with supplemental damage into the Sigma Shield is going to make their lives much easier. By doing so, you will have an easier time forcing out the enemy Life Weaver's pull and can thus get more space through your Sigma. On top of this, you can charge your healing to send in with your Tracer as she takes duels to make her life easier as well. That being said, you have to understand that you are the target and make sure that you don't put yourself in positions that can make you an easy target. Use your dash when you need to to keep yourself alive alongside smart pedal platforms to win consistently. Another composition utilizing characters that might be found in ladder frequently include Reinhardt, Bastion, May, Baptiste, and Lifeweaver. This is something you probably won't see in competitive play, but in ranked play, this is something that could actually work. After the Reinhardt shields Bastion's sentry turret spray, he has the decision to pin in aggressively as Lifeweaver gives him that option. He could pin in first and then shield later given on the situation as well, but just understand that these are the basic win conditions they have to their disposal. In the mirror, it is all about what team can break the shield first and pressure the enemy team out harder. Because of this, it's extremely important that you are breaking the shield with your thorns in the downtime when you don't need a heal. On top of this, it is even more important that you communicate for your Rhine to be aggressive with pins so that you are getting the most value out of playing Life Weaver. At the end of the day, if you aren't going to be able to coordinate that, why aren't you just on Lucio or Zenyatta? here. Now that we have discussed both compositions though, let's discuss how they interact against each other for Life Weaver. As Life Weaver with the Sigma into the Reinhardt composition, it is important to recognize that the enemy is going to be playing very aggressive with the Reinhardt so that the Bastion can get openings to find meaningful damage. Because of this, it is important that you live the initial sentry form and then start allowing for your Sigma to be more aggressive. That being said, you want to make sure that you are aware that he might get walled off by May. If that is the case, you can use one of your pedal platforms to look over the wall and then pull him out. In terms of all ultimates though, you have a lot of options. You can pull key targets out of the May ultimate as well as completely counter her ultimate with your tree if it catches more than one. Also, you can pull people out of Bastion's ultimate if they get stuck. You can use your pedal platform to lift Earth Shattered teammates up, and you can even use your tree to block off sight lines if things go south and the Bastion is lighting up your team. At the end of the day, the way you beat a Bastion composition is by kiting the sentry and retaliating afterwards. On the other side of the matchup, with a Reinhardt into the Sigma composition, you have to enable your Reinhardt to be aggressive. The enemy team is going to be trying to take angles consistently in an attempt to force out your cooldowns and take you down. Because of this, no time can be wasted and the targets need to go down fast. 
fast. That being said, your pool is likely going to be allocated to the pinning Ryan the most. In terms of ultimates, your tree can be put in the middle of Sig's ultimate to completely counter it. Save your pools to save teammates stuck by Tracer's Pulse, and good luck with Sojourn's ultimate. There isn't a whole lot you can do there other than maybe block off sight lines with your tree. Life Weaver definitely influences the game in ways we've never seen before, but with the win conditions out of the way, let's discuss how you're going to pull off these conditions with solid positioning. Because Life Weaver pulls people towards him, it is important that you don't stack right next to your teammates, as it defeats the purpose of the ability. Instead, you have to make sure that there is some distance between you to force out enemy cooldowns and make the ability meaningful. That being said, you don't want to play so far away from your team that you can't even pull them away from danger, or worse, isolate yourself, especially against the dive composition. In this situation, you should have your pre-placed platform in advance and bounce your way back into your team once you start getting pressured out, since your team won't need the pull in this situation, as they aren't the targets, and then slowly rotate back away once the pressure is subdued. Life Weaver positioning is hard because there isn't a great deal you can do to fight back, but there is a lot of time you can buy for your team so that they can clean up and get the job done. Now that we have discussed the basics of positioning, let's see who is going to make the most out of you on Life Weaver so you can know when you should pick them. Life Weaver has been pretty terrible consistently since the start of his release in a Overwatch 2, but now he is finally getting some much needed buffs that are allowing him to shine in high level team play. Where Life Weaver shines is in the aggressive opportunities he presents to his teammates when they fully utilize his strengths found with Life Grip. That being said, Life Weaver is terrible when it comes to holding space. He wants to make the fight as front facing as possible and get away with stuff that really shouldn't be able to happen normally. Because of this, he does really well with tanks like Reinhardt, Sigma, and Junker Queen as they complement this aggressive style. Outside of tanks, however, the DPS I would play with Life Weaver in a ladder setting would have to include hit scans like Cassidy, Soldier, or even Bastion and Ash. While it isn't necessarily conventional all the time, being able to lift them up when they look for an alt or just to give them a nasty angle during the fight is unmatched. The lower you go, the less answers players are going to have against it, and it will result in straight up wins sometimes too. Lastly, the best support to pair with Life Weaver has to be Baptiste. For what you lack in AoE healing, Bap covers. Not to mention that he is an incredible support right now. Life Weaver is also okay with Ana, as you can play to split off from her, beta aggression onto her and then pull her to safety. Not to mention that typically characters like Genji and Tracer are played around Ana, which you can help a lot with your primary healing options. Take away this though, Life Weaver doesn't do the best in the flex support slot, so try to avoid him with characters like Lucio and Brigitta unless the meta changes and you are playing in really high elos. Make sure you always think about your composition's win condition in order to pick the best fit for every single game. And with that, the guide comes to an end, but let's finish it all off with some key takeaways. For beginners, learn how Life Weaver's kit works, including his healing tech and range, on top of understanding when it is time to pull. Also, make sure that you get used to looking for locations to pre-place your pedal platform in a pinch, as this will greatly increase your survivability and uptime. For intermediate players, start understanding how you fit into every composition you are playing, as you are going to be forced into a lot of different styles and ranked. Sometimes you are going to be the target against dive compositions and will need to place your pedals for yourself. Other times you are not the target and you need to look for ways to give your teammates angles or to save them from specific ultimates. And lastly, for those advanced players out there, look for ways to really optimize your gameplay as Life Weaver. You can get his ultimate incredibly quickly through utilizing the different little techs in his kit, and this will allow you to carry games even in top 500. That being said, make sure you look to send in healing with players that are about to take duels and get the most out of each and every pedal platform. And with that said, we have officially reached the end of today's Life Weaver guide. Practice makes perfect in learning every hero within Overwatch. Be sure to watch Life Weaver players to apply things that you have learned throughout the guide today. While there aren't any real Life Weaver streamers that I know of, the Vegas Eternal utilized him frequently throughout their recent run in the Overwatch League, and there are tons of games available to watch of him on YouTube. I also do VOD reviews over on Fiverr, as well as post additional education educational content on Patreon if any of that interests you. All of these links will be found in the description. If you've learned anything from this guide, please do like, share, and subscribe as it helps the channel out a ton. But until next time, I've got a peace out and paz out. I'll see you in the next one.